in the top 100. For sure. For sure. Any requests for, um, oh, Dunlaps, who? Man, you are on fire, Life Hacker. Oh my God. Why does Dunlap not get credit, man? Why does Carlos Dunlap not get credit like that? Like, it's, it's getting disrespectful at this point. It really is. It's like everybody knows Dunlap is a beast too. I think I think Dunlap made it last year, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, it's almost like I don't know, man. The dude has been a very good defensive end. He's one of those rare guys that are very big in size. I think he's like six four, six five. I mean, he might be like six six. You know, two eighty. The guy can run fast. I don't know. I don't know how many people can really hold the guy. I mean, the only thing that you can really try to hate on him about is the fact that his sack numbers aren't as consistent as, say, a Khalil Mack or guys like that. But, I mean, why not? Dunlap definitely should be there. I'm trying to think about anybody else. Should anybody else for the Bengals be considered for the top 100? If I had to say, if I had to say mine, it would definitely have been um, Andrew Woodworth, which I think he did make it. Andrew Whitworth, Kevin Zeitler, I think definitely should have made it. Um, uh, Tyler Eifert. Is, you can't really say Tyler Eifert just because last year he didn't play. But, I mean, I've seen injured players make it before. So, I don't know. Like, I, Did AP even make the list? I'm not sure AP made it. But I remember one year AP played like a handful of games and he still made it because it was Adrian Peterson. Tyler Eifert, I feel like, you know, I... I'm not gonna say he should have been a lock for one, but Tyler Eifert, but Dunlap for sure. Dunlap, Tyler Eifert, um, AJ Green, uh, Kevin Zeitler, um, and Andrew Whitworth. I don't think you can say really Pac-Man. Maybe Kirkpatrick. Uh, he had a decent year. I don't know if it would be top 100, but Kirk definitely had a decent year. I. I think that he had a better year than Pac-Man, but, you know, depending on who you talk to, uh, you never know. I think that he had a better a better year than Pac-Man last year. Um, Dre was in a contract year. I hope that he can continue to play like that. Um, corner is going to be interesting, man. Corner is going to be definitely an interesting thing to watch. Um, do you guys think that Pac-Man will get suspended? Woo! John Ross. Yeah, let me know if you think Pac-Man will get suspended, though. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I don't know how uh, how Goodell is going to treat this, man. I, I really don't. And if he does, what are, what are you guys, if he does, if Pac-Man does um, face a suspension, do you guys really think that Dark West Denard is going to do a decent enough job? Woo, John Ross! Oh, he intercepted it. I don't know, man. I used to be a, I used to be a Denard guy, man, but he's kind of, yeah, I'm surprised too. I think that he should have been suspended, Life Hacker. I'm surprised he hasn't been suspended yet either. It's like, the longer it kind of, it kind of drifts out of there, the more I kind of think that he might not get suspended. But it seems like the Bengals are ready to, to definitely handle a, a Pac-Man suspension. Let me ask you this. If he does, if he does get suspended, oh, I shouldn't have showboated. If he does get suspended, who do you guys think will replace him? I think it'll be Dark Horse Denaro, but I really feel like it should be William Jackson the Third. If it was me, it would be William Jackson the Third. I mean, me personally, I would probably trade Dark Horse Denaro, honestly, and see what I could get from him. Maybe like a third rounder. Or something like that. Because, I don't know, man. I feel like, even though the dude has only made, like, one play, Kivari Russell has done more than than uh, Darquez Denard has. And I feel like it's crazy that um, Kivari Russell is, you know, uh, possibly on the line to not make the team. I think that the guy was really good. I think that he was a steal for us. Um, I feel like he's he's played a lot. I'd like to see Russell. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Kivari Russell needs to get a chance. Kivari Russell, I don't know if you if you remember this dude, Life Hacker, but he reminds me a lot of Tory James, like 
a dude that can just always be around the ball. And I think he, he had a year with us where he had like nine interceptions or something like that. I feel like Kivari is a ball hawk, man. Like, dude came in, first play, interception. Like, what else do you need to see? Like, when I watched Darquez Denard, man, and don't get me wrong, I wanted him to do good, but the dude gets toasted. I honestly think Josh Shaw should get a chance over him. Like, Josh Shaw is a pretty decent player. I always thought that Rock, that um that he was going to be a pretty decent guy as well. Anyway, coming out of USC, playing at UF in, in the uh, – in the SEC or whatever. Ooh, John Ross. Ooh, John Ross. Man, man. I know you guys cannot wait until that, that first training camp session whenever whenever Ross comes out where they just go back and do that deep bomb, boy. Let's just pray for no injuries, man. Luckily, we made it out of mini camp without injuries. Hopefully, that trend continues. Oh, Nixon. I don't know if you guys were listening to my last show, but um, there was a Bengal player <laughs> messing with Jeremy Hill about Mason taking this spot. Man, I think Jeremy Hill is going to be on fire this year. Do you think letting Reggie Nelson go was a mistake as of now? Yeah, I, I definitely think that it was. Um, I really, I don't know what happened with that situation. Um, because Pac-Man Jones recently had his training camp. And Reggie Nelson was actually there, if you've been watching him on Instagram. And Reggie Nelson is interested. I got a feeling that Reggie Nelson could be on his way back to Cincinnati in like a year. Mark my words, I think that he could be back. But I think as of now, it was definitely a mistake. Um, when you watched us last season, it was just like that Reggie factor was gone. Like, any time we played the Steelers, you could expect the Reggie Nelson interception. It was almost like he was one of Roethlisberger's receivers, right? It was just like, you just expected it. And, I mean, when I caught some of the Raiders games, because, like, when I play fantasy football, I would see the Raiders games, he would be making those same kind of plays for them. I'm talking about at the end of the game, the game-winning interception to basically seal the game. That's what he was doing. Um... So, I think we definitely missed him, man. Sean Williams, to me, the verdict is still out on him. They actually had to switch him to, you know, strong safety because he just really couldn't handle that. He just really couldn't handle it. Like, I, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. But I, did, I think we definitely missed Reggie. Reggie was one of my favorite Bengals, too, man. You talk about one of the all-time steals in a trade. Um... Now, I mean, it depends on what Reggie was asking for, but I think his agent, from, from reports that I read and things that I heard from, like, Dave Lapham and everything, they said that his agent messed everything up. Um, so, I think that I think that he should have stayed. Um, we did sign Sean Williams. Um, basically, it was kind of like a, a Dunlap deal when Michael Johnson left a few years ago. And Dunlap decided to take the deal that he didn't want. That's essentially what kind of happened, apparently, with the Reggie Nelson thing. Which I don't think that that was a bad deal if they offered him that. But yeah, man, I, I definitely wish we still had Reggie Nelson for sure. For sure. Hopefully, Sean Williams will do his thing this year. But ugh, hopefully, we'll see Reggie back next year. Because they obviously, in Oakland, drafted OB. Melifananu, I don't know how to say the guy's name, but the writing is on the wall that Reggie is is about to get replaced in Oakland. So whether it's this year, next year, I mean, if Obi has a good um, if Obi has a good uh, good uh training camp, you know, he could be a camp a camp casualty, and I'd love to see Reggie back in stripes, man. I I mean, just seeing him hang out with Pac-Man, and from what I heard, I get a lot of inside information, too, because I know a lot of people that actually know the players. The players were very upset with um, the Bengals not bringing back Reggie. I can tell you that for a fact. They were definitely upset about that last year. They thought that Reggie should have definitely been back. Um, they thought that that was a huge loss for us. Um, they were upset about that move. I also know some people that were upset about the Marvin Jones move. Now the Marvin Jones move, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that I know about the whole Marvin Jones situation. I'm not gonna put it all the way out there, but 
him and Pac Man, I will put this out of, this out there. Him and Pac Man kind of got into it a little bit after the 2015 playoff game um, in the locker room. So I'm not sure if that played a role in him leaving as well. Do I think that Tyler Croft will step it up this year? Good question, Life Hacker. I think I think he has a chance. Um, I wasn't. If you've been listening to me for a while. I really wasn't big on Tyler Croft. I was kind of mad, actually, when they drafted him. Um, but I think, from what I've heard, Andy Dalton's been going to him a lot. I think that Croft could potentially be like a secret weapon. Um, obviously, they feel like he still has something to provide for the team. I think he's a good dual threat guy. Um, but I don't know if Andy Dalton was just hitting the guy up because he's never really thrown to him before or if it's... You know, he's a secret weapon and he's always open. I mean, I would understand why he's always open too when you're playing with a John Ross, AJ Green, you know, other guys. But I'm, to be honest with you, I'm more of a Uzoma guy. I'm definitely a, a, a um, CJ Uzoma guy. And it's crazy because I was mad when we drafted Uzoma too because I didn't know who the guy was. But I think Uzoma has a lot of potential. He had some key drops last year. Um, but I think that Uzoma can definitely do his thing. Now, another thing to think about is Mason Shrek has been inserted now, too, and I think Marvin Lewis said that he's um, had a pretty decent uh, mini camp and everything like that. Is he going to be somebody that can possibly uh, challenge one of those guys? I don't know. But I think Croft, you know, depending on how his preseason goes, definitely can be a guy that can come in and do his thing. You know what? I feel like putting some, some rookies in. But, yeah, I appreciate the questions, man. I like doing it this way and hearing what you guys have to say because this is this is pretty dope. Um, I know that this is my first time doing this, so hopefully it'll grow. But um, what do you guys think of this format? Let me know Let me know some comments on there on how you think about this format and me using it. You think that this is cool or would you like to see, like, the audio-only kind of stuff? 